Hi guys, I'm Ivory. So today I'm gonna to be doing another wear test and the reason why I'm in natural lighting today is because for the past couple of days, it's been raining nonstop here in Illinois. So my sump pump is going off very frequently in the basement. It's very loud and it was cutting into my talking. It's very distracting. So up here, it's a little bit quieter. I'm hoping tonight when I do my final check-in, it won't be going off as frequently because by then I won't have natural lighting to show you how my foundation's wearing. But I'm gonna be doing a wear test on the Too Faced Born This Way foundation. I'll be showing you how this applies initially as well as checking in throughout the day to show you how it wears. For anyone that's near her, I have both oily and acne prone skin, so my wear tests are catered towards people with similar skin types. And if you find that this review is helpful, I will link up here a playlist of all the other foundations that I've reviewed. Before we get into the video, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I try to post new videos every single week. And also be sure to follow me on my social media. Everything is underscore Ivory Cherry. So this foundation has been around for a while, but today is my first time trying it. This is what it looks like. The bottle says that it is undetectable, medium to full coverage, and that it's oil free. It contains the standard one fluid ounce and retails for $39. So before foundation, I did add primer. I use the L'Oreal Infallible Matte Lock Primer. For anyone that watches my wear test, you know that whenever I do use primer, 99% of the time, it's this one. And because I'm only doing the wear test for one day as opposed to multiple days, I did go ahead and add loose setting powder underneath. This one is from Derma Blend. Having powder underneath your foundation creates a barrier so that it prolongs your oils from coming through. And I used a puff and I only focus the powder on the areas where I usually get most oily. So my nose, the center of my forehead, and my chin area. After that, I applied the foundation one side with a brush and then the other side with a sponge because those are two of the most common applicators. The brush I used is the Sigma Round Kabuki. It is the F82. And the sponge I used is actually a microfiber sponge from Juno & Co. On the brush side, the first layer was what I would consider medium. It covered up a good amount, but not everything. And I used one entire pump for my brush side. But with the microfiber sponge, the coverage was way better. I would say it's a medium full on a first layer. And I did go ahead and put one pump on my glass plate for the sponge side, but the coverage was so good that I only ended up using half of the pump. So then I ended up using that remaining half pump for my brush side on the second coat, and then I added another half pump for the sponge side. So in total, I used two and a half pumps for my entire face, which is really good because usually I use about three to four pumps for my entire face. Considering that this is a high-end foundation, the fact that I have to use less to get better coverage is really great because then you get the most bang for your buck. And even though two and a half pumps is already not a lot of foundation to use, I just want to note that on the brush side, I end up using one and a half pumps of foundation versus the sponge side, I only used one. It's not a huge difference, but it might matter to someone who's really trying to stretch this foundation for as long as they can. In my experience, the microfiber sponge had better coverage and used less product than the brush side. And then after that, I did the rest of my base as I normally did. Before I forget, the shade I'm using is warm beige. The undertone is right, but it's a little bit dark for me. It probably doesn't look like it right now because my setting powder does lighten up my foundation. But if your powder doesn't do that, I would go the next level below the shade, but with the same undertone, whatever that is. <laughs> Sephora says that the finish is natural, which is a little bit ambiguous to me because natural could either be a natural matte or a natural luminous finish. But to me, this foundation is more on the natural matte side. So hopefully that clears things up for you. But at this point, I have been wearing the foundation for three hours. I don't know what it is. I always mean to film my intro as soon as I finish applying my makeup, but I'm always super hungry at the end of it. So I end up going up for lunch and eating first and then coming down and doing my intro. But I've been wearing the foundation for three hours now and so far, so good. I'm not shiny at all. All the areas that usually start to break up first. So far, nothing has happened yet. There's just a little bit of creasing right here on my smile line. Nothing worse than my other foundations. This is pretty typical and it's pretty faint, so I'm not mad at it. I really don't have any negatives about this foundation at this point, so I'm just gonna continue going on about my day, but I'll be checking in in a couple more hours to show you how it's looking then. So I'll see you in a bit. All right, it is seven hours into the wear test. It still has not stopped raining, so I cannot film downstairs. So my work around the problem is I filmed all the close-ups downstairs, so I'll be able to insert some clips since that is where my normal filming setup is and all the good lighting is down there. So you'll see what the foundation looks like. But to talk about the foundation, I'm just gonna be upstairs. It's the only way to get the best of both worlds. You get the best of both worlds. Chilling and take it slow. Then Oh my God, I hate that show. Hannah Montana was my breaking point when I realized that I was too old to watch Disney shows. Not Disney movies, because I still do like watching Disney movies, but that show was when I realized that I was too old to just have Disney Channel in the background. So overall, at seven hours, I think the foundation is holding up really well. There are some issues that I'm having with it, but in general, everything has held together really nicely. In terms of oiliness, I think it's okay. I'm almost at the limit where it's a little bit too much, but not 
not quite there yet. It kind of looks like I took a brisk jog in makeup. So there's like a little bit of like dew and sweat going on, but I can assure you I have barely moved today. The only issue that I really see is right here in my smile line. The crack, even though it's not really deep, it is very long. Already at the three hour mark, I saw that the foundation was settling in my smile line just a little bit. Usually it just settles even more and more until there's like a really obvious smile line. In this case today, the smile line goes from almost my nostril to down here by my lip. So it's like extra long, which isn't great, but the fact that it's faint makes it okay. It's not the best, but it's just okay. <laughs> but you know, it's kind of easy to just buff out. I'm not gonna do it too much because I don't want to disturb the foundation. Everywhere else though, on my nose, everything is still in place. All the other areas where I usually get separation and cracking, it actually looks great. Everything except for the smile crack looks the same. I just look a little bit shinier, to simply put it, which I don't mind, you know, especially it being Wow, have I been talking that long? It's been seven and a half hours now, so that sounds about right. This should be happening at around the seven and a half hour mark. I think it's normal to be this shiny, but like I said, nothing's separating, caking, there's no splashiness. I'm just, I'm just a little bit shinier. So that is it for now. I will check in at the 10 hour mark to give you my final thoughts. All right, we have reached 10 hours finally. Just an update, we just got a notification that because it's raining so much, the river that we are very close to is most likely going to flood, and the flood is apparently expected to last till Wednesday. It's Saturday, just. FYI. So I think I actually have to bring my filming station back up to my beauty room for a couple days. So it's just gonna be like the old days. You remember when I had this? as my background, that was like over a year ago. Actually, when I first started my channel, this was my setup. I had a backdrop here, and the lighting for my vanity mirror was all I had. So for a lot of my videos, oh, you can see my bra, but for like, 30 of my videos, this was the lighting that I had. But going back to the foundation, I did blot the side about two minutes ago. I'm gonna insert close-ups in a second because again, I did them downstairs since that's where my filming setup is. But at the 10 hour mark, this has surpassed my tolerance for how oily I will allow my skin to get. Definitely too oily for my taste, which is why I did blot. But what surprised me is that even though I was very shiny, everything stayed in place. I'm gonna exclude the smile line here just because that's the exception. But everywhere else, there was no separating, no cracking, no splotchiness, no settling. Everything looked exactly the same as I applied it. I was just shinier. So I really like that. And like I said, I did go ahead and blot. The blotting sheets that I use are from Amazon and I will link them in the description box below but I did go ahead and only blotted half of my face so that I could compare sides. After I used the blotting sheets, I did lose a little bit of coverage on my nose and my chin, but it really wasn't that bad. It's a little bit more noticeable on the nose, but on the chin, I can barely detect it unless I'm really up close. Everywhere else though looks perfect. It's like brand new. Typically when I touch up like this, I do lose a little bit of coverage. If you get up close, you can kind of tell that I touched up. It's kind of like putting a band-aid over something that needs stitches, but it is like a quick fix. But this foundation doesn't even look like that. It looks like I just applied the foundation with the exception of my nose and my chin. But like I said, they're not bad at all. So that to me is wonderful. That tells me that not only did this foundation wear really well after 10 hours, but if you want to wear it even longer, you can touch it up and continue wearing it for more than that. For me, a minimum wear test is 10 hours so whenever it passes that test I always give it a thumbs up but this foundation surpasses that before I say whether or not I recommend this but at this point I think we all know what I'm gonna say let's talk about the good and the bad for the good I would say the coverage is amazing and the fact that I was able to get it to full coverage with two and a half pumps is almost unheard of which is helpful since this is a high-end foundation you can really stretch it more than other foundations it has great wear time and then with the exception of my smile line which is very easy to buff you just kind of just tap it out it didn't settle anywhere it wasn't cakey and it still looks good even if you blot it. The things I don't like about this foundation, I guess if we're being nitpicky, it did seem odd to me that everywhere else seemed really nice and then yet I had like a really big crack in my smile line. It was pretty faint, but it was also really long, so it was kind of distracting to me. And I guess also the price since it is a high-end foundation, it is a little bit expensive, but my thing about high-end products is if it's gonna be priced that high, it has to at least meet or surpass my expectations. This one definitely did. So even though it is expensive, I still really like this foundation and I would recommend it. You will be oily at the 10 hour mark, but as long as you have blotting sheets or maybe like a beauty blender to just dab a little bit of the oils, you should be good. I really can't say enough good things about it. I can see why so many people love this foundation, but that is it for this review. I hope that it was helpful, and if it was, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and feel free to comment down below what foundation I should try next. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next one. Bye!